Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we've got a news and rumor video to discuss. We've got some injury updates to talk about, some signings, some waiver updates. Plus, we've also got some trade rumors to talk about involving the Calgary Flames, Colorado Avalanche, Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Utah franchise. And we'll talk all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Nintendo channel. Now before I begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you all your support, we're not with that view guys, so if you haven't already, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down in the comment section below so we can all discuss today's video. Now in today's video, we're going to start today's video off as we usually do by discussing some signings from our past couple days. So we'll start with the massive one that happened just a couple days ago, and that was with the Dallas Stars from Jake Onger as Onger, who's in the final year of a three year, $4 million deal, winds up signing an extension with Dallas and it's the exact same extension. Jerry Jeremy Swayman signed with the Boston Bruins. He signed an eight-year extension with AAV of $8.25 million. That will be the start of next year. This sort of seems to be the new benchmark for goaltenders who are really high-level goaltenders because Andre's got an 8.25 now, Allmark's got an 8.25, Swayman's got an 8.25, Sorokin's at 8.25. So goaltenders who are really good and really high elite players, uh, it seems they're getting $8.25 million. So that seems to be sort of the benchmark at this point for goaltenders getting new contracts. Tracks. I expect Shesterkin to be way higher than that, but for more other goaltenders who are looking like that sort of trajectory, it seems like the upper sevens, low eights is going to be the sort of echelon those guys are going to be in, so just a note there. For Andre, last year he had 54 games played, putting up a 2.72 GAA and 905 save percentage, which is sort of average and definitely low for his career because the prior three years he had over a 910 save percentage and a below 2.53 GAA, so interesting note there. So far this year, he's been phenomenal. Four games, putting up a 1.48 GAA and 953 save percentage. Part of me thinks they wanted to get this done earlier so he didn't get even more money because he was looking like he was going to be a fantastic player this year. So that's a really good move there for the Stars. Get Andre signed on a long-term deal and an extension that should kick in next year. So pretty good pickup there for the Dallas Stars. Then we saw Buffalo Sabres sign a goaltending prospect. As 2023 fifth-round pick Scott Ratzliff has signed his three-year ELC with AV $865,000. That'll be the start of next year. Ratzliff so far this year is playing five games over in the WHL, playing up a 2.97 GA and a 9.18 save percent. She's looking fantastic over in the WHL. I think eventually could be a solid backup, maybe even starting a level goaltender for the Sabres. So that's a pretty good pickup there for Buffalo as they sign Ratzliff to an ELC. Then we saw the Utah franchise sign Terrell Goldsmith is a defenseman to an ELC. Goldsmith, who's the fourth round pick in the 2023 draft, gets a three year deal with a $70,000 at the beginning of the start of next year. Goldsmith, another young prospect for the Utah franchise that looks like he could eventually be a solid, maybe third pair defenseman. This past year has been playing over in the WHL, put up a assist so far in six games. Looks all right. That's going to be a pretty good pickup there for Utah to get Goldsmith on their contract with a new ELC. So interesting note there for Utah. Then we saw the Chicago Blackhawks give an extension to one of their younger players players as Landon Slaggart, who's in the final year of a two-year $93,000 deal, has signed a two-year extension with an AV of $900,000 that will be going to start next year. Slaggart's gone some looks at the NHL level, but has mostly been an AHLer over the past couple of years. Last year, put up a goal and four points in 16 NHL games, coming over from the NCAA, where he had 31 points in 36 games. So far this year, has two assists in three games over in the AHL, so looks pretty good. I think it could be a call-up option this year, too, or maybe a late-season call-up if he's doing really well, so interesting to note there, but Slager gets a two-year extension. Then we saw the Edmonton Oilers sign their first-round pick from this past year's draft to Sam O'Reilly, who was their first-round pick in the 2024 draft, sends a three-year ELC with AV of $965,000 they begin to serve next year. O'Reilly, really good player. Last year had 20 goals and 56 points in 68 games over in the OHL. This past year has two goals and five points in seven OHL games. Looks pretty good. I think eventually could be a solid third, second-line center there for the Oilers, so that's a pretty good pickup there for the Oilers to get O'Reilly on a new contract and he's now under contract. And then we also saw the St. Louis Blues sign Jake Neighbors earlier today. Neighbors, who's in the final year of a three-year ELC, signs a two-year extension with AV of $3.75 million. I know there were some Oilers fans who were angry about the Broberg and Holloway offer sheets, who are saying that the Oilers are trying to offer sheet one of the Blues players like a Jake Neighbors. Well, that's sort of off the table now with Neighbors now signing a two-year deal to remain in St. Louis. Neighbors last year played a full season at NHL level, playing 77 games, put up a career-high 27 goals and 38 points, so it looked pretty good. So far this year, it's two goals, including an overtime game winner, and three points in six games for the St. Louis Blues. Looks pretty good. Still a really 
good. I think middle six forward there for the Blues. So to get him on 3.75 for the next two years is pretty good. So some interesting moves there. As we saw Blues extend Neighbors. We saw the Hawks extend Slaggart. We saw the Stars extend Onger. And we saw ELCs to guys like Sam O'Reilly, Scott Radzliff, and Terrell Goldsmith. So interesting note there. Going over to a quick injury update from the past couple of days. We have a couple of injuries to talk about here. Uh, Alexei Tarapchenko missed Saturday's game with a lower body injury and his day to day. Well, Nick Letty is questionable for Tuesday's game. So some bad blows there for Torpchenko and Letty, but Texi should be activated off of IR in the near future, potentially even for Tuesday's game. So interesting out there for the St. Louis Blues. When it comes to Macklin Celebrini, he's going to be out a few more weeks with a hip injury. So a bad blow there for the Sharks as they're going to miss Celebrini for the next couple of weeks. Ryan Harmon is day to day with upper body injury. He may miss today's game as well. So a bad blow there for the Wild. Darcy Kemper is placed in IR with a lower body injury. He's going to miss the next couple of games. Oil Edmondson got back in the game action and was activated off of injury reserve. So good stuff there. As Edmondson is back there with the LA Kings. Then for the Florida Panthers, Jonah Gadjevich missed Saturday's game with an undisclosed injury. He's currently day to day. He may miss later today's game too. Well, Matthew Kachuk has missed the past couple of games due to an illness. is scheduled to return for Tuesday's game action. So interesting note there. Dakota Joshua, who's been out for the first couple of games for the Vancouver Canucks, has started skating and may be closing in on return, hopefully in the next couple of weeks for the Vancouver Canucks after having, I think it was some sort of cancer before the season started. So good to see that Joshua is starting to skate. Samuel Honchik is week to week with upper body injury for the Calgary Flames. He's on injury reserve right now, so a bad blow there for the Flames as Honchik's going to be out for the next little while. Kent Johnson has upper body injury and expected to be out longer term, which could be upwards of maybe a couple of weeks to maybe a month or two. So a bad blow there for the Jackets as they're going to have Johnson out for the next little while. Ellis Merzlikens is nearing a return from his upper body injury, could return as early as Tuesday's game action, so interesting out there. Johnson Drone has an upper body injury, has been placed on injury reserve, so bad blow there for the Avalanche, but he shouldn't hopefully miss too many more games. Logan Stanley is activated off of IR, got back in the game action on Sunday, so good stuff there for the Jets. Anthony Duclair is also seems to be going to be out longer term with a leg injury, still not sure exactly how long, but it sounds like it's going to be at least a couple of weeks, if not a month or two, so bad blow there for the Islanders as their offseason acquisitions injured. Phil Elf is expected to take Sealer off of injury reserve in the not system future, potentially as early as Tuesday's game, so interesting out there. Vegas has Victor Olsen out with a lower body injury, he's out for a week to week period of time, so bad blow there for Knights will William Carlson return to practice in a non-contact jersey and should be returning in the not too distant future for Vegas. So interesting note there. Alexa Lafreniere's day to day with upper body injury, so a bad blow there for the New York Rangers. Hopefully he returns to the not too distant future. David Perron stepped away from the Ottawa Senators due to personal reasons. Hopefully he returns soon. And whatever he had to leave for is all right. So interesting note there. Jordan Green is practicing after suffering an upper body injury and should be back in the not too distant future. So that's good news for the Sabres. Joseph Wolk could be nearing a return from his growing tight and he might be able to return as early as Tuesday for the Maple Leafs, so this could be a really good pickup there for the Maple Leafs. And Vince Dunn has been placed on long-term injury reserve with upper body injury and should be out for at least, I think it was like two to three weeks for the Seattle Kraken, so that's a bad blow there for the Kraken as Dunn's going to be out for a little bit now with upper body injury, so interesting out there. But those are all the injury updates from over the past couple days, so hopefully we see some of these guys like Dunn, Duclair, Johnson be recovering in the not distant future, but good to see guys like Stanley, maybe Sealer, maybe Wool, and not just in the future, get back from injury. So, just a note there. Going over to a couple of waiver updates from over the past couple of days. Now, in our last rumor video, we're talking about waivers, and we talked about how Brennan Lemieux and Dalen Gambrell were on waivers for the Canes and the Jackets. Both did wind up clearing on October 17th, so good to see that those guys wound up clearing and that those guys didn't get claimed. So they're both in the AHL right now for those two teams and call-up options if those two teams are into some injury troubles. Then we saw a couple of players be placed on waivers on Sunday, on October 20th, and that was including Adam Beckman in New Jersey and Julian Goche in New York Eye. Goche has been a solid 12th, 13th floor there for the Islanders, so interesting to see him on waivers. Beckman, I think, will start a season on and open the injury reserve. And with the Devils still having a relatively healthy forward group, they don't need him, so they placed him on waivers. Both guys did wind up clearing, so not too surprised there, as Goji, like we said, is a solid 13th forward. Beckman's more of an AHL at this point anyway, so interesting out there. And yesterday, we saw Matthew Highmore be placed on waivers by the Ottawa Senators. Now, at this point in time, not sure if he's cleared or not. It's very likely he probably does clear. He started the season on season opening injury reserve as well, so very likely 
likely chance that he clears and sent to the AHL. But interesting note there that Highmore is on waivers for the Ottawa Senators. That's waiver updates. Lemieux in Carolina, Gambrell in Columbus, Beckman in New Jersey, and Goche in NYI have all cleared waivers. While Highmore in Ottawa is currently on waivers. So interesting note there. And lastly, going over to a couple of trade rumors. We're going to start off the video by looking at the Calgary Flames. On a recent radio hit, I think it was, or his podcast, Frank Valley was talking about the Calgary Flames, talking about some potential rumors early on in the season. And he says that the Calgary Flames are currently in the market for adding a center. So look for the Calgary Flames to be looking for adding a center. They had a really good start to the year. My guess would be, even if this sort of continues, I don't think they would want someone of more veteran type status. I think they would probably be looking for someone who's a little bit younger, who can grow with the team. Name that instantly comes to mind will be Trevor Zegers, and I'm not sure how much assets they want to move, but Zegers I think could be a really good addition there to Calgary, being like a solid top second line center for that team. If they did want to go in the more veteran type area, a guy could be like a Mikel Granlund who's entering the final year of his deal, Brock Nelson who's entering the final year of his deal, if those guys are available. There could probably be a couple of other guys too, maybe some younger guys could also be in the market there for Calgary, but it does sound like a corner Frank Saravalli, that they are in the market for a center, probably looking for someone who can fit like the first or second line center. They probably won't want to move off too many pieces like I don't think they want to move off any first round picks I don't think they want to move off any of their top level prospects they think they're still in a rebuild but if they could get like a solid center maybe like a second round pick and a lower and prospect and maybe a roster player I think the Flames might be willing to do that especially after the start they've had this season so keep on the Calgary Flames not guaranteed any means that they will be going after a center but definitely keep an eye on them as there's a possibility out there that we could see the Calgary Flames go after a center like I said Zegers and Nelson and Granlin are just names I'm throwing out there I haven't heard any names linked to Calgary but I think those guys could be really good additions there for the Flames so I'll have to wait and see on that going over to the Utah franchise. There's been some bad news when it comes to the blue line. Off-season addition, John Marino, as well as Sean Jersey, who was injured, I think, on Monday last week against the New Jersey Devils during the Utah franchise's first loss of the season. Both of those guys seem to have longer-term injuries. This is according to Craig Morgan. It sounded like Marino's going to be out for months, so it's probably going to be another month or two before Marino gets into the lineup for the Utah franchise. Jersey, it sounds like, is also going to be out for at least a couple of weeks, if not a month or two. So with those bad blows on the blue line, expect Utah to be in the market for a blue line addition. There were already some speculations that Utah wanted to go for it this year and we're already going to make some big splashes potential to the trade deadline. But now with the defense the way it is right now, instead of trying to rush more young players up, there's a very likely chance that they could try and make some sort of a move. Some players who I've seen be linked to Utah could be a guy like Cam Fowler, who Elliot Freeman has been talking about. There's a potential trade candidate there for the Anaheim Ducks. Fowler's, I think, got two years left on his deal at six and a half million dollars. It could be a fantastic addition for a younger team like Utah. Another one would be David Savard. He's into the final year of his deal. He's a right shot defenseman. Could really replace a guy like John Marino. So I think he could be a really good addition. He doesn't come up too much of a cap at either. Another guy who I've seen be linked to Utah is Timothy Lilligren. We know the Leafs really want to move on from Lilligren. He's a right shot defenseman. He's on the younger side of things. So could he be another guy who wants to be moved? So we're going to have to wait and see on that. But Utah is in desperate need of some help on the blue line with guys like Jersey and Marino both out for a potentially longer period of time. And names like Fowler, Savard, Lilligren, part of me thinks maybe a guy like Roger Anderson could also be a really good fit there for uh, Utah if Calgary wanted to move him. Could all be really good fits there for Utah. So we're going to have to wait and see both the injuries to Utah Blue Line. Expect them to make some sort of a move in the not too distant future. And when it comes to Pittsburgh and Colorado, we're looking at their goal team. We're going to start with the Colorado Avalanche first. There's been a lot of recent talk about the Avalanche making a goalie move because Alex Georgiev has not played over really well. This Avalanche team is 2-4-0. Now those 2-2 two -two wins have come against lower end teams in Anaheim and San Jose and the Anaheim one was barely a win. So they've not shown me against really good teams that they are really good. And that win against San Jose where they finally were able to hold a team to below three goals was with Eustis Anion in the net. So Jorgev has had a really rough start this season and if he continues over the next five, 10 games to give rough starts like the Avalanche, part of me thinks that maybe he'll lose the net. They do have Kapo Kakinen who should be coming in not just in future after claiming him off of waivers so they could run technically with an union captain in tandem for a time being and maybe move off of Georgiev and have him be a healthy scratch that's a possibility if Georgiev does not get his game uh, in check there's a very likely chance that he could be a uh, trade candidate for the avalanche and there's a very likely chance they could try and maybe go after a goaltender or two Elliot Freeman recently linked a guy like Mackenzie Blackwood to the avalanche saying that the avalanche have had in the past interest in Mackenzie Blackwood and with him in the final year of his deal on the Sharks being a bond dweller there's a very likely chance that if the season isn't going overly well they could try and 
check in on him. My guess would be he'll probably be a second round pick plus something else for Blackwood. So it'll be interesting to note there, but Blackwood may be an option there for the Avalanche to try and improve their goaltending situation. So we're going to have to wait and see on that. But Georgiev's had a really rough start to the season. If he doesn't pick up the pace, very likely chance we see Avalanche make a goaltending move. And if it's not moving off from Georgiev, then they're excited to try and add a goaltender like a Blackwood or someone else. So interesting to note there. And lastly, when it comes to the other goaltending side of things, we're looking at Pittsburgh Penguins. When it comes to the Penguins, Jerry was recently a healthy scratch. Jerry, who started the season as a starting goaltender, lost the net early on to Blomquist. Recently, Nadelkovic started the season on injury reserve, was activated, and he started this game recently against the Winnipeg Jets. Was Blomquist backing him up, and Jerry being the healthy scratch. Now, there's a very lucky chance the Penguins could try and do a three goalie rotation, which is possible, but I don't think they really want to do that. So, there's a possibility that Tristan Jerry may be on the block now and could be moved. According to a couple of recent reports, it sounded like they tried to move on from Jerry in the offseason, but there were really no takers. And Elliot Freeman on his recent 3rd Year Sauce podcast was talking about this and said that there was a time on the, the weekend when he thought there's a possibility Jerry could have gone on waivers, but he didn't wind up going on waivers. So we're going to have to wait and see on what happens with this. This sort of reminds me of the Avalanche situation, which sort of brings me to the conclusion, could these two teams benefit from a swap? Could Georgiev go to Pittsburgh, Jerry go to Colorado, maybe those two guys benefit from a fresh start? It's possible. The, both teams have three goalies in their roster right now. Their stars are not looking overly good. They're training towards both both being healthy scratches at some point. So part of me thinks that maybe this could be a swap that works out for both sides. I think I've heard that somewhere too. I'm not exactly sure. That might be just me speculating things on that, but it's going to be interesting to see like Jerry being a healthy scratch. I think he's got three more years left at a $5.75 million cap. It's just not going to work for Pittsburgh. So I think a trade could come at some point. Waivers is also a possibility, but with Nadalkovich and Blomquist being the two goalies at this point for the Pittsburgh Penguins, it seems like a trade is going to be coming at some point. So keep your eye on Jerry, keep your eye on Georgi, have. But with the start that those two guys have had, I would not be one bit surprised if we saw those two potentially be in trade rumors and not just in the future. And on top of that, potentially even be traded for each other. I could see that be a possibility as well. So we're going to have to wait and see on that. But that's what we're talking about today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this down in the comment section below. What do you think about all this? Does Gorgiev get moved? Does Jerry get moved? Do the Penguins and Avalanche trying to acquire a goaltender? Could they be swapped for another? What do you think happens with the Penguins and the Avalanche's goaltending situations? Does Utah add a defenseman? And if so, who do you think they could try and target? And do they fly and try and add center and if so who do you think they could try and target definitely let your thoughts on all that plus what do you think about the injury updates waiver updates and signings from the past couple of days definitely let your thoughts on all that down in the comment section below that's all I'm going to talk about for today if you like this video if you like to subscribe down below thank you for your support when I thought of you guys so if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe button down below don't forget to comment down in the comment section below so you can also discuss this video also the blog talk about news rumors analysis stuff like that so check that out I'll leave a link to that in the description below and I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video see you guys soon